Chapter One. What did he do? Abigail Kaufman clutched her hands together and took a deep breath of the cool fall air that drifted in through the open kitchen window. Her father's repeated question and ominous tone had her doubting her actions, but once she began a plan, she usually stuck with it. I said, "He, well, just made me feel a little uncomfortable with the way he was kissing me, and." Touching, and I. Her father's face turned beet red. I, I will, have words with him. He clenched and unclenched his heavy hands, and Abigail felt a surge of alarm and deeper indecision. Father, it was nothing in truth. I will have words with the bishop and that boy, and then he'll marry you. Abigail's eyes widened, the swiftness of her impulsive plan ringing in her ears. Marry me. But I don't love him. Her father regarded her with flashing eyes. Love has nothing to do with marriage. We will go to the bishop and Doctor Nepp, and we will see this solved before morning. He drew a shaky breath. When I think of that boy, just baptized today, just accepted into the community, and then daring to trespass upon your honor, go upstairs and dress in blue. I will bring the buggy round. Hurry! Abigail turned and fled up the steps. Dress in blue, the color for marrying. She gained her small bedroom and slammed the door closed behind her, leaning upon its heavy wooden support. She saw herself in her bureau mirror, her cheeks flushed, her cup askew upon her white gold hair. She wondered for a strange moment what a mother might say right now, what her mother, whom she'd lost at age five, would say in this situation. Her heart pounded in her chest. This situation. In truth, Joseph Lambert, with his lean, dark, good looks and earnest eyes behind glasses, had done little more than speak to her, and annoy her. She just wanted to pay him back a bit for his casual dismissal of her usually touted beauty, and now she was going to have to face his mocking scorn. For she had no doubt he'd laugh outright at the suggestion of an impropriety between the two of them. They'd only been a few dozen feet from where everyone was gathered for the after-service meal, and it would be a bold young man indeed who'd risk anything, let alone steal intimate kisses. But her father had believed her, or he'd believed the worst of Joseph Lambert at any rate. She snatched a blue dress from a nail on the wall and changed with haste. She might as well get it over with, she thought with grim practicality, and yet there was one small part of her that wished things might be different. That wished she might truly be on her way to a marriage that would allow her to escape Solomon Kaufman's rule, in cold distance. She hurried back down the stairs and went outside to where the buggy waited. Her father started the horse before she barely had her seat, and as they gathered speed, she tried to marshal her thoughts. She saw her life as it had been ever since she could remember: cold, lonely, devoid of love, and even simple conversation. Somehow the English world outside seemed so much less austere and confining, so much less full of unspoken pain. She let herself escape for a moment by imagining marriage to Joseph Lambert. Not only would it get her out from under her father's thumb, but she would be able to keep house, or not keep it any way she pleased. They wouldn't have to live with her father. At the picnic, she'd heard Doctor Nepp, the popular English physician, say something about making his barn over into an apartment for Joseph. It would be just as easy to fit two as it would one. She didn't take up that much space. Her possessions were scant. She'd learn how to make two blouses last for a season, and the secrets of turning out old dresses to look new again. No, she'd be little bother to Joseph Lambert. She chewed a delicate fingertip in her nervousness. It might work out well. The more she thought about it.